Hello Internet! Welcome to another episode of Basil Spot Live. Um, we are again going to be using this fast Snorlax team for one more week um, and see if we can cheese any more opponents out of uh, their hard-earned points. <laughs> so I hope you enjoyed last week, you know, and I'm hoping that you're enjoying uh, my VGC 17 content as well because I know, you know, people are maybe a bit more interested in Battle Spot doubles as that's possibly going to be close to what VGC 18 is now. But I don't know, it's quite strange really because most of the VGC 17 format I didn't really play, to be honest, and now in these, like, in this couple of months or whatever from the Liverpool Regional, um, the Worlds, the Worlds Tournament, um, and, um, whatever's just happened? What is happening now? Well, there's London coming up. Uh, oh, there's a mid-season showdown in uh, Edinburgh as well. Like, I'm actually playing VGC 17, I'm actually exploring, you know, some ideas, and I've played more VGC 17 in this sort of month, these two months, whatever, than... The rest of the season so uh you know this is my my spurt of vgc 17 so uh <laughs> enjoy it while it's here i guess um but let's see what we've got then so our opponent has got um a, a somewhat sort of passive team um i mean i say passive uh, i'm looking at the first thing i'm looking at with this team is how easily snorlax can set up um celesteela porygon um, and Nihiliga can't really touch Snorlax too much, that's why I say passive. Um, but obviously the top three can, if um, Coco's got a Z move, then it can do, but um, I'm not sure if it will. Um, you can expect it'll have Discharge next to uh, Marowak as well. Uh, Garchomp might have the Z move then. Um, so things to be aware of. Yeah, definitely things to be aware of. But I'm just going to go, it seems to be the way with this team, isn't it? I'm going to go with Whimsicott and Snorlax uh, leading. Um, I think we all know I'm going to go with Tapu Lele and Arcanine, don't we? But, <laughs> but let's just take a moment to say yes, we are going to do that. Yeah, so let's go with Tapu Lele. And I think we want Arcanine, yeah, I mean, especially we don't want Raichu just because he has got the Lightning Rod as well. And we do want something that can hit, hit the Celesteela too. So we'll go with these four and uh, see where that takes us. Um, like I say, with, with all of these teams, um, I don't think it's that solid, but... Uh, Maybe I just say that to, to cover my back when I lose. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is, and it's a fast Snorlax. It's uh, a bit of a silly strategy, maybe. But still, yeah, this is best of one. This is battle spot, so let's see. Okay, so Tabacoco and Celesteela. Okay, so Tabacoco is one of the things that um, Snorlax is not faster than in Tailwind. Hmm. I didn't expect this lead from him. So we have got Lele in the back. But obviously that doesn't appreciate the Celesteela. I'm just wondering how um, possible it is for me to belly drum here. I mean, if I get if I protect and tell when to then Arcanine can come in. Did he have any intimidates on his team? He didn't actually. So Arcanine can come in and and always threaten the Celesteela. But at the same time it can threaten the Tabakaku as well. He might just double into the whims he got here as well, though. So I'm a bit shy of doing this, but I am just going to go for a tailwinded belly drum. Worst case scenario is if it's a Z electric into Snorlax, and we'll see right now if it is or not. Okay, it's just a sky drop actually. Oh well, that's that's even better for us. Well, not even better, but that's. I'm glad I, I'm glad I belly drum there, and you can see again, Sonic's is faster than the Celesteela. It does mean that we get a guaranteed knockout on the type of Coco next turn as well. So expecting just a leech seed here then. My like worst case now would be a flamethrower burn. But yep, yeah, leech seed and he hits, which is fair enough. Uh, we can't withdraw the Wimsy Got, but you know that's fine. Um, so Wimsy Got has two attack here. It can't use any of its uh, pranks to move. So we have to we have the energy ball here. Um, and it really makes no difference which one we do it into. Um, I mean, Celesteela, it'll do nothing, and it'll Leech Seed recover it back. Um, so, no point in doing that. So, I'm just going to do it into the Tapu Koko as well, just in case this is a Focus Sash um, Sky Drop Tapu Koko, which they never are. But, um, this is basically a free knockout into... Actually, we've got Tailwind, haven't we? So, um, Whimsicott actually doesn't get to, to do any move. So, forget what I was just saying about Whimsicott. Um... And Snorlax, yeah. Yeah, so if this was a slower Tapu Koko, then Snorlax would have been faster. It is a Focus Sash. Ha! It is a Focus Sash Tapu Koko. 
What was I saying? <laughs> so wash my mouth out. Oh, you never see focus sash. <laughs> Sky drop to uh, The wonder of battle spot. And that's an attack rise, actually. So not a defense boost, um, which would have maybe um, put it out of range from Arcanine here. But it has to be Arcanine going in next. And where do we go from here? Because we've still got two turns of Tailwind. Uh, because we because we know that's not an Assault Vest, um, Tabu Coco now, it can protect. But we're still going to target into it, just because we don't want our Tailwind turns being wasted. So, yeah, just going to... Uh, just going to do it this way around. Two frustrations might knock Celesteela out. The Leech Seed recover, um, recovery could put it um, you know, back in range, so it's a 3 here KO with, with frustration, but um, we'll see how this turn plays out. Because he hasn't got any Intimidates on his team, and Snorlax is faster than Nihiligo, which is one thing that Arcanine doesn't appreciate that he's got potentially in the back. So, I don't know, it's interesting. I mean, maybe people on, on Battle Spot um, play a little bit... Is this Marowak? Ah, oh, that's Marowak. That's a shame. Could have higher horsepower powered that slot, but that would have been a bit of a read, and it is just a protect there. Okay. So, he's making some moves now. Um, ah. Oh, <laughs> turns like that. Um, I mean, it would have been it would have been a, a, a bit of a read to um, high horsepower into that slot. Um, maybe yeah, maybe not so much of a hard read really. Um, but he doesn't really have too much that wants to come into um, the Tapu Koko slot on that side. I mean, if I flare blitz into it and Celesteel comes in, it'll survive. I'm just thinking, do I Inferno Overdrive into the Tapu Koko? And high horsepower into the Tapu Koko. Because I think the Marowak surely has to protect here. But maybe he doesn't. Because um, if the Tapu Koko comes back in again, he's going to be out speeding. Um, I'm just going to return into it. Uh, frustration rather, into the Tapu Koko. Hoping the Marowak protects here, obviously. So thinking this is probably Celesteela. No, oh, no, it's Nihiligo. So he's losing his Nihiligo at least. But the problem is, Tabakoko is going to come back in here, so Marowak does protect that turn, so good. Um, I can't remember if my thought process actually came out, I think it might have done, how I said, um, or at least I thought, um, people on Battlespot maybe play a little bit safer than they do on Showdown. Um, interesting, just because I've been playing a lot on Showdown recently. Um, so, yeah, nihiligo has gone, yeah, that went down quite slowly. But now Tabakoko probably does come back in, and threatens the Snorlax. Well, threatens the Snorlax with a Discharge, I suppose, but... Oh, yeah, so we know that it's not a Zed. Um, yeah, so we know it's not a Zed Electric on Top of Cocoa, which is good information. So he can't switch his Marowak. Like, I'm thinking, you know, maybe he switches his Marowak out into Celesteela, so there's no Lightning Rod, and he goes for Zed Electric into Snorlax. That's the only way, really, I can see him sort of knocking it out. So I'm not going to do that. If Arcanine had extreme speed here, then that would be fantastic. Um, you know, maybe maybe it should on this team. But uh, <laughs> it doesn't. So I'm going to put Lele in. Get rid of the uh, electric terrain. Even though I don't think a discharge would knock Stormax out anyway here. And I'm, I'm just risking paralysis chances, I suppose, aren't I? Because um, I know that a high horsepower will you know, knock out this Marowak. I don't know. If he doesn't paralyze me here, I think I'll be okay. And he could switch his, not his um, Marowak back into Celesteela here as well. So if I had extreme speed, I think I would have won the game there and then. Oh, okay. Yeah, right. So he's scouting out for the extreme speed there. I did think he might have done that. And I do expect my Snorlax is faster than the... Um, yeah, faster than the Marowak, which it is. Uh, plus six, definitely going to knock it out and get rid of um, the Leech Seed from this turn anyway. So, yeah, yeah. So, you know, even though I didn't have extreme speed, just the, the threat of extreme speed, um, you know, kind of forced him to, you know, 
forced him to uh, protect his Tapu Koko that turn. And now, because my, my um, Lele is Scarfed, um, I do have a very safe... Um, I'm going to go for a side. I'm not going to Dazzling Gleam, um, because he could have Wide Guard. Um, so I'm just going to Psychic. Worst case scenario here is he double protects Tapu Koko and gets it. Uh, and heavy slams my Lele. That is still a, a possible scenario. Um, and I'm just going to Frustration into the Celesteela. So he doesn't even try and double protect. Yeah, he, he, he didn't know that I was Scarfed there. So, good. Tapu Koko goes down. Um, this will do probably about 55-60% to Celesteela. Yeah, even more. Yeah, I mean, it was one... Ooh, Iron Defense. Oh. I don't think that's going to save him still. Uh, because I think a Psychic and Frustration next turn will knock him out as well. Ooh, but with the um, Leftovers Recovery... And there is still Leech Seed as well. Maybe not. Hmm. So I'll bring in Arcanine next turn then. Yeah, he did get an Attack Rise from his Beast Boost. So maybe this is a more offensive Celesteela. This is interesting. Um, so yeah, I will withdraw the late into our client. If he Leech Seeds that slot, then fair enough. Yeah, I don't. I still think I've won this game, but um, like maybe maybe he protects this turn, or maybe he calls my Lele switching out, which is extremely extremely obvious, and uh, Leech Seeds it as well, or he just forfeits, which um, yeah, I mean I. I he recognises that I'd won the game as well. He knows I had Arcanine in the back. He didn't know I had Zed Fire, but... Um, yeah. There we go. Good. <laughs> so, <laughs> a successful start to the video. Um, a, a successful start to the week as well. As we... Uh, <laughs> we um, run through with Snorlax. Snorlax is high horsepower. Okay then, so let's look for one more game then. And we'll see how we go. So we're actually climbing the ladder a little bit. Maybe, maybe I should be taking this to London, who knows. <laughs> <sighs> Alright. Bonus points, by the way, if uh, if you know this album. There we go. It's a fantastic album. Released quite a few years ago now. Um Yeah, okay. So um yeah, I don't know I don't know what I'm going to do next week. Um I mean as far as this week's concerned, we'll have um the battle spot doubles on Wednesday, and um, this team, I think, you know, this is probably going to be the last last week with this team, um, this team again on Friday, uh, then next week, who knows, I don't know, um, my time is going to be eaten up a little bit more, especially with the London International Championship coming up as well, because I will want to, you know, prepare for that too, um, so, I don't know, I'll try and, I'll try and do something, but uh, we'll have to see how it goes, I guess. Um, Alright, well, it looks like we're struggling to find someone. Do I need to <laughs> do I need to show them Marmite? <laughs> I might have to. Uh, it's interesting. Like, do the battle spots um, series last for like three months? Is it around that sort of time? Because I never really sit on battle spot and and play games other than to like record videos like this. So you know, seeing I've done sixty four games on this, we must be you know surely we must must be sort of nearing the the end of the, the current battle spots here. Or maybe I've just recorded quite a few videos. I suppose I have been doing three videos a week for the last... Um, however many weeks now. I think this is, what, the sixth? Sixth or seventh week of me doing videos? Me back on, on YouTube. <laughs> Alright, let's try one more time and see if we can find an opponent. And, uh, yep, the Steam... So you know, again, um, like you know, like I, like I constantly keep putting my teams down. Um, you can probably see how this team can just fall apart turn one. You know, a bit like the Lorantis team if they had Taunt or whatever. You know, that could just shut that team down. Um, with this this team, if I do decide to belly drum turn one, if they just double into the Snorlax, because it is a jolly one, it's not as bulky as it can be. You know, obviously. So um, you know, it is susceptible to to, to doubles and. And being knocked out like that, but I think it's time. I think I've got to show the Marmite. So I've got this big jar of Marmite, huge Marmite. So come on, battle spot. This is the magic, the magic jar. <laughs> I suppose it is a bit of an awkward time. Um, I'm recording this actually on Sunday, and it is. I think it's the morning. Yeah, it is technically just still the morning. So. Um, I don't know, maybe maybe everyone's in church. Ooh, obviously, Nasty Plot is not in church, is he? Because uh, he's got a very nasty plot. But, <laughs> um, did they say he was from Japan? 
Oh well. Um, so this guy he's got um, four of the um, Zelda's team. I think did yeah the Narcanine didn't he? yeah. Uh, Mandibus, Lele, and uh, Garchomp. But this one's also got a Coco and a Metagross. I mean Metagross. I mean they tend to have weakness policy, obviously, don't they? But they normally have that paired with um, like a Salamis. So maybe this Arcanine has got Bulldoze. Maybe the Garchomp has got Bulldoze. Who knows? Um, but yeah, this is maybe a bit more of an awkward one because Mandibuzz can foul play if we just barely drum. Um, yeah, so maybe maybe that's not so good. I mean Lele. Uh, Lele. Um, Raichu doesn't look too bad here, I suppose, does it? It's just threatened by the um, Garchomp, though. So I'm gonna go. I'm actually gonna go with Raichu and Tapu Lele, just because I want to cover the Garchomp. Um, so, ooh, doing something different with this team. How exciting! <laughs> um, and in the back, yeah, I think we do want Arcanine for the Metagross. And you know what? Let's go with Gyarados. This does leave me a little bit weak to, maybe a little bit weak to the, um, to Pococo. I just, I need to watch out for it. But, yeah, I'm in, I'm in uncharted territories now. I'm actually doing something different with this team. Not using Whimsicott and Snorlax. Um, but, yeah, I mean, at some point this week, I did want to take Gyarados just to show what it is. I'm actually not 100% on the, the item I've got on it. Um, I think I think it's the the water boosting item because I didn't want like three Z moves on this team. I think it's Mystic Water. I think that I put on it. Um, I thought about Lumberry and whatever, but um, but nah. So now, if I knew my calculations a bit more, I might be tempted to go for a Psychic and um, Stoke Spark Surfer into Metagross. I mean, I have got Arcanine in the back as well, but obviously I can't intimidate him in Metagross, and he doesn't want to come in on a Zen Headbutt. Tapu Lele. What can Tapu Lele do? Hmm. I think I'm going to Spark Surf something here. And I think it is going to be the Metagross. But I am Scarfed here. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna Moonblast and Spark Surf for Intimate. I think the Metagross is gonna feel quite safe here, especially because I can't fake out. And I'm thinking the combination of these two attacks might knock the Metagross out. Yeah, that did a reasonable chunk to it. So come on, Raichu. Let's see how how good at surfing you are. I can use that as a thumbnail now. <laughs> Funny thing about you know, doing videos like. And, and so many videos as well. It's like thinking of, of thumbnails that, that look interesting and make you want to click on the video. And Z moves, are, especially these signature ones, they're, they're golden, aren't they? But, ooh, yes, that does knock the Metagross out, so that's good. Um, it does mean that we are relying on our kind a little bit less in the back. Um, and it's just a dazzling gleam, actually. So, we'll see how much damage that does. That's a lot of damage. Well, critical hit on Tapu Lele. Um, it's that choice specs, then. Because obviously it was slower than Raichu. He's put Arcanine in. Hmm, he he could switch his Lele out into Coco and Extreme Speed. Either of these Pokemon, obviously. Um, I've got Gyarados in the back, but if he has got Coco, if he has got Tubber Coco, then I'm in a very bad a very bad way. Because um, that critical hit on Tapu Lele meant that um, it is in extreme speed range, definitely. And uh, my Lele is probably the, the main thing I guess I've got to deal with the Top of Coco. Hmm. What do we do here then? I mean, if I just double into the Lele. If I double into the Lele and he switches into Coco, I'm at least getting some damage onto it. Um, if it is choice locked, he can't protect it as well. Um, he doesn't switch it. At least, so we should be getting um, two attacks on this Lele. Are we going to knock it out? Oh, we're not. Oh dear. Well, that was close. So the critical hit on Lele actually didn't matter there, um, because he would have knocked me out with what a flare blitz or something here. Yeah. Okay. So we've got Arcanine and Gyarados in the back. 
Um, we've got to hope that this... Um, oh, it is Mystic Water. Hope that this Arcanine doesn't have Wild Charge, which it could next to... Uh, you know, along with um, his own Tapu Koko, if he's even brought his Tapu Koko. Um, because we outsped the Lele with... Well, hmm. Okay, so we don't know that this Arcanine is faster than the Tapu Lele, but we, we know it's not Scarfed. And so I'm, I'm suspecting that my Arcanine is going to be faster than his Tapu Lele. So I'm thinking of Dragon Dancing and going for a Bulldoze. Um, Worst case scenario there is if he does, I mean, if he switches his Tapu Koko in, it's going to take a Bulldoze, and that would be really good for us. Um, but if he does that, and he's got Wild Charge in Arcanine, um, then he can obviously threaten the Gyarados, but um, he is at minus two now, because we have just double intimidated it. So I am going to go for a Dragon Dance here, and because Gyarados is flying, I'm going to Bulldoze, and um, not not touch myself. So, ooh, it is, it is this Coco coming in. Oh, it's Mandibuzz. Oh. Okay, then. So he's getting a special effect. Okay, so at least there's no Coco. His Arcanine is at minus two as well. If he's got a Will-O-Wisp, then that would be bad. But, yep, yeah, it's slower now. Okay, so Ger um, Gyarados is faster either way now. So I mean, Will-O-Wisp and Wild Charge are really the only two things I'm fearing. And it is Will-O-Wisp, and he does it. So... You know, it's even funnier because I'm sure at the beginning of this game, or the beginning of the video, whatever, um, I was saying that I've got Mystic Water on this Gyarados. I had thought about Lumberry, but I didn't really find any, any uses for it. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> so it looks like... It looks like um, Will-O-Wisp Arcanine is becoming a little bit of a thing now. So, that's something to watch out for. So, yeah, maybe, maybe, uh, well, obviously, you know, looking at this, uh, Lumberry would have been better on the Gyarados. Um, but what do we do here? So, Mandibuzz, Mandibuzz does, does threaten now quite a fair bit. But, does a combination of these attacks knock it out? I'm not sure it will. Okay, so he's going for a helping him. Yeah, he's going to go for a foul play because, um, you know, I'm burned, but I'm I'm at plus one. So maybe we need a flinch here. I mean, he's probably doing this into... Well, I don't know. He could be doing it into the Arcanine. Oh, that's so close. Critical hit as well. Oh, we get a, <laughs> We get an Ice Fang flinch. If I was fishing for a flinch, I should have gone for a waterfall there, really, shouldn't I? Um, hmm, I suppose it's kind of frozen there as well with, <laughs> with the ice fang. So we've been a little bit fortunate here. Um, but let's let's just just think about what we're going to do. Um, so he's got his okay. So he's literally in the back. It's not a problem because it's slower than both of these and it's got like one HP. Mandibus don't normally have protect, but it has got foul play. So this Mandibus is a threat. So we do need to target it with something. And I'm pretty sure. Uh, plus one burnt waterfall will do more damage than a flare blitz into his Arcanine. So very simple way around. I'm just going to flare blitz into Mandibus. Like I'm not going to go for like a, a helping hand waterfall into Arcanine just because Mandibus don't normally have protect. And um, I, you know, that is the threat here. I want to knock it out. Waterfall does a decent chunk of damage to Arcanine even still. Wow. I mean I'm at plus one, and that's I mean that's in range of another waterfall, isn't it? So Mandibus is gone. So this Arcanine, I doubt it's got, you know, it won't have Wild Charge now. I mean, I say that, he'll probably going to use it now, isn't he? No, nah, it's just Flare Blitzen. Into, I don't think it really matters which one into at this point, because Gar <laughs> Gyarados is already burned. Um, yeah, and I'm pretty sure we've sealed this game up. So the, the only contentious turn here, I guess, was the uh, flinch on the Mandibus. Uh, so we did go for a, a helping hand foul play, it must have been foul play, into one of these Pokemon. If it was into Gyarados, then, because um, I'm at plus one, um, you know, because I'm burnt, that doesn't affect foul play damage. Um, I do think it would have knocked me out. Um, so then, I suppose, in the next turn, I would have Flare Blitzed into the Mandibus, because that was the threat still. But his Arcanine would have been able to... Just, I mean, it looks like Flare Blitz is the, the only thing he's got to actually touch us. 
Um, so you just been flare blitzing, flare blitzing at minus three, doing nothing. Um, Lele and Mandibus are still slower. He would have had his berry though still. So it would have been close. So yeah, he, he would have had his berry, but he's at minus two. And I'm not intimidated, and I've got would have, you know, at that point, single target bulldozers. So I still think I would have won the game, actually. Um, yeah, I still think I would have won the game. Uh, I win here as long as my Arcanine is faster than his Lele, but I do expect it to be. I could have waterfalled in there just to be extra safe, yeah, but I kind of knew at this point Arcanine was faster. Um, and I suppose actually it would have been safer, really, to... Um, to waterfall into the Tapu Lele there, because I know 100% that Gyarados is faster than the Tapu Lele, and I know that his Arcanine at this point can't really do anything. So really, I should have waterfalled into the uh, into the Tapu Lele there, um, just because I knew it was faster. Um, I know this Arcanine is jolly, max speed, so um, and I know that his Lele wasn't scarfed, so the only way he could have won that there is if his, if his Lele was timid, max speed as well, and won a speed tie. Uh, but even still, it would have been much safer to... Uh, Waterfall into Lele there as well, so it's always nice to, to criticize your own plays. Um, but yeah, he's probably gonna forfeit, but if not, we're gonna get to helping hand waterfall here. Yeah, but he forfeits. So um, yeah, a, a, a surprisingly successful video again um, with uh, two more two more games where actually Gyarados did something. Um, I just find it so funny how like I was so sure that Lumberry was like a useless item like this generation on things like Gyarados. And here we go, we come across a uh, a, a will-wisping Arcanine. But anyway, um, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Uh, you know, please, please press that like button, um, because, you know, I, I trust YouTube to uh, make it help my channel. Um, and, you know, put your comments as well. I, I do enjoy reading all of your comments. Um, like me on Twitter as well, um, if you, you want to see me. <laughs> if you want to see me, like, post links and say occasional words every once in a while. Uh, but yeah, thank you guys, and uh, goodbye for now.